How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we're taking a look at iOS 18.1 Developer Beta 5. And as you're going to see, we break down lots of new changes and features in this latest beta update. You definitely don't wanna miss this because there's lots of cool things added to the iPhone in this developer beta. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. All right, folks, so here it is, iOS 18.1 beta 5. As you can see here, this is the splash screen for the update. And with that in mind, we have the build number 22B5054E for those keeping score at home. Now let's talk about some real features, drag and drop is finally available for iPhone mirroring if you're running the latest macOS Sequoia Beta 15.1 Beta 5. So be sure to keep that in mind. But once you have the beta on your Mac and the beta on your iPhone, you can do this while you're mirroring. Long press, drag, and look at that folks. Drag and drop from my iPhone mirroring session to my desktop on my Mac, just like that. But I wanna show you more. It doesn't stop there. Let me show you this. So you can drag from your Mac to your iPhone, just like that. And then when you unlock your phone, everything's there. The stuff you moved from your Mac to your phone is going to be there. It is super convenient, but let's show you some more, right? So let's go up to LumaFusion, one of my favorite applications for editing videos mobily. I'm gonna drag this image of the AirPods that we just you know, moved over from 9to5mac.com via mirroring, and you can just drag it right into your LumaFusion editing session. But this is LumaFusion. We need a video, right? So you can drag a video that I shot with Photo Booth on my Mac, and then I just move that over directly to my iPhone in this LumaFusion project, just like that. I mean, folks, can you see how this could be super handy? Well, let me show you one more thing. So we're gonna open up Keynote, and here's a slide with the placeholder there. I'm just gonna drag this image here directly on the slide like that, and I can even edit it and, of course, change up the masking and all that, just like that. So editing Keynote slides on your iPhone via your Mac. Now, a lot of times people ask, Jeff, how can I support the channel? How can I support what you guys are doing? Main way you can do that, folks, is subscribe. The best way, though, is to thumbs up because that helps other people find this video. And you, we also have memberships as well. You can join that if you wish to. Appreciate you, folks. Now, let's talk about another new feature. This is related to AirPods Pro. So if you go into AirPods Pro settings, of course, you see the noise control there. You can toggle it off, which, you know, turns off noise cancellation, transparency, adaptive, all that. Basically, there's no protection for hearing. Now, of course, you can do the same thing when you go into your control center for your AirPods, you can turn that off, but you can hide the off option here in this latest beta. Let me show you that. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Sorry, I'm trying to one hand this thing. So show off listening mode, you turn that off and you can see the off listening mode is no longer there, right? So we can no longer turn it off. That way your hearing stays protected. You actually get a warning if you try to turn that back on. So one of the big new features to come to AirPods Pro 2 is the ability to use them as hearing aids, cheap hearing aids, right? Big hearing aids is not gonna be happy about this, but the hearing test is not yet available in this latest beta, but we were able to find it and show you this guy, how this all works. So when you go through the hearing test, it's gonna ask you to find a quiet place where you can focus and take the test. It's gonna ask you next to place your AirPods in the correct ear. So you want to make sure the right one's in the right ear, the left one's in the left ear, right? If you're hear wearing hearing aids, obviously you want to remove those first because these are your new hearing aids. All right, so once you do that, go ahead and adjust the position and depth of each AirPod until the fit is snug, but comfortable. You don't want it to be uncomfortable. And once you do that, we're going to start the check. So music will play during the check and it's checking the fit and the noise. So obviously don't remove the AirPods. This is not the actual hearing test, but right now it's just checking the fit. So it determines that the fit is good and it's quiet enough to take the test. So do not disturb will also be turned on during the test to prevent distractions. This will take about five minutes and the test will play tones at different volumes and frequencies and each tone will pulse three different times. So of course you can play that sample 
We'll hit next. So during the test, listen carefully and tap the screen each time you hear a tone. It's okay if you miss a tone, you'll have another chance to hear it. So start the test and then basically you just tap the screen when you hear the tone. Pretty cool stuff. Can't wait to really try that out once it officially launches or not officially, but launches in beta. And given its current state, I think there's a pretty good chance we could see this in beta six. So the big news with iPhone 16 is that new camera control button that allows you to perform all sorts of camera related functions. One such function is to be able to switch between your various lenses. And up until this beta, you could switch between all the rear facing lenses, but you could not switch to this right here. Ooh, there's probably a reason why they didn't want you to switch there. Can they see that face? They're probably going to remove it from beta six. They're going to, no, we don't want to see that but it's cool, we're already seeing improvements to camera control. Now, you'll also notice a new Apple Intelligent splash screen and messages, which you can see here, talking about the smart replies and whatnot. And finally, when you go to settings and go to display and brightness, you're gonna notice that the wallpaper for switching between the appearance is now the iOS 18 wallpaper. Previously, it was still the iOS 17 wallpaper. I guess Apple just forgot to change it. But now, since we're here, might as well switch over to dark mode and you can see that Apple Intelligence and Siri icon now has a dark mode version, which is nice to see. And there's an updated Apple Watch app icon. You'll see it there. Do you notice what's different? Can you tell? Can you tell at first glance? Be honest. Well, here it is compared to the previous version with the extra little button there. So now we just have the one button and that uses the, uh, I believe SF symbols uses that same glyph. So if you go into like um, um, shortcuts and search for your symbols, you'll see it there. Speaking of shortcuts, there is a new action to show and hide control center, which is cool, right? It's weird that we never had that before, but this shows, hides, or toggles control center. So we're just gonna add that. And you already know what I'm gonna do. You already know that I'm going to set up a home screen icon for this guy. And we'll just give it a, give it a name. Let's call it CC for short. And we'll give it a color. Let's go ahead and add that to our home screen. So what that does, you already know. You tap it and you can quickly access your control center right here. So on a larger phone, it's a lot easier to access that control center. Of course, you can always use reachability, but who wants to do that, right? Just put the little icon there. Uh, and that's really cool. But let's take it a step further. We have the action button. So you can assign a shortcut to that action button in iOS 18. So we added that shortcut. Now you press and hold the action button that opens up control center. It sounds a little ridiculous, right? Because I mean, it would be faster just to swipe down from the upper right hand corner. But let's change it over to a toggle. Now, when you press and hold, you can view it and dismiss it just like that. This is just kind of cool. You can do that. There's also a new shortcuts action to pay your Apple card balance, which is interesting. So you can add that. You can change the amount. So current month, minimum payment. Where's the pay in full option? They just want you to make those minimum payments. No. Anyway, that's not working totally just yet but maybe in the next beta. So there's also a new shortcut action to open up any health section within the health app. So you just select open view, gonna go ahead and add that, then you can change the view that you want to open, which is really neat. So you can jump directly to a specific section of the health app, just like that. So hearing, obviously, you know, with all the AirPod stuff. So you play it, there you go, jumps right to hearing just like that really cool new feature and Apple intelligence writing tools. There's now a button in the notes app dedicated to it. So have you subscribed to nine to five Mac? Hopefully you have. All right. So hit that Apple intelligence buttons. You get the little writing tools. You can rewrite to recompose this sentence to hopefully make it better to improve it. Try it again. Have you subscribed to nine to five Mac YouTube channel? I highly recommend it. And I think you should subscribe as soon as possible. But there's other things. You can change it to a professional tone. Would you like to subscribe to 9to5Mac on YouTube? All right. Or you can change it to a concise. Have you subscribed to 9to5Mac on YouTube? You should do it as soon as possible. Or you can change it to friendly. Hey, hey, have you checked out 9to5Mac on YouTube? I highly recommend it. Y'all probably like this guy's office rocker. <laughs> but but seriously, this is a feature I have been wanting since iOS 18 launched, right? So in iOS 18, 
you got the new control center, which you can customize. But the thing is like, once you mess it up, cause you're going to mess it up, how do you get it back to default? You couldn't before, but now in iOS 18.1 beta five, you go to control center options. Now you can reset control center. This will reset your control center layout to factory settings, which is great. So let's do that and let's look at it. Of course, we'll use the action button. And there you go. So that's the stock layout for control center. Just in case you mess it up, which you will, you will mess it up. You can always go back to defaults, which is nice. All right. So there's also individual Wi-Fi and VPN connectivity toggles within control center. Now, if you go down to the connectivity section, when adding or looking at the controls browser, you can see it right here, Wi-Fi and VPN. Those are two new toggles that are individual toggles now. So you can just add those individually. To your control center page. Let's go ahead and add VPN as well. There we go. So if you like to break them out of that main control center connectivity little box there, what's weird though, the, the button, what's up with the, like the, the colors don't really match. I don't know. Kind of weird, but you can long press to get directly to your Wi-Fi settings like that and jump to a specific network. There's also sign in security, which is under the Apple uh, settings or Apple ID settings. And this has been redesigned, right? It doesn't look totally different, but there's a lot of little subtle changes in this guy. Previously, you had to tap an edit button in the upper right-hand corner to reveal the add email or phone number option. And then when you go into each individual option there, for instance, your email, you'll see a, a new splash screen, sort of, so to speak, for that. You'll also see a, a new dedicated section for automatic verification instead of just a toggle on the main screen. So it's just a little bit of TLC or sign in and security and RCS messaging got five new uh, carriers that adopted RCS messaging for iPhone. So that's a nice little thing. Of course, RCS allows you to play nice with Android users. So you get read receipts, you get typing indicators, better or higher quality media, all that jazz is a very nice change. And again, like I said in the last video, if you want to check your status, you just tap this little guy right here. And iOS 18.1, of course, allows you to record phone calls now. So you just hit this little button right here. It'll say, hey, this call will be recorded. So it actually announces that so both parties can hear. But there's evidence that there will be a recurring chime as well. That will sound like that. Now, it doesn't appear to be live just yet, but that'll help people know that it's being recorded. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you appreciated this video, if you like in-depth content like this, where we deep dive into the latest iOS changes and features, let me know down below. Thumbs up if you appreciate this video that helps others find it. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Also, you can check out the Beta 4 walkthrough here, which has tons of features that you may have missed. And be sure to watch our full-on iOS 18 top features video here. Have a good one, folks.